guys, we are here at our sloth exhibit. We have been celebrating the birth of our baby sloth from our dad, Teddy, and our mom, Grizzly. Now, typically what would happen out there in the wild is that the mom would kick the dad out and continue to take care of her offspring. So right now, Grizzly and Teddy are a little bit of an unusual situation in that they live together and are not solitary like other sloths. But since that is how they've elected to live, we felt it was really important to keep them here that way. Mom and baby need time to bond together, and Teddy, very smartly, decided to give them some space. So mom and baby have moved back into the maternity ward so they can spend time bonding and without displacing Teddy from the exhibit. We want to make sure that our animals are getting all of the care that they need with minimal stress. But the exciting thing for us today is that it's going to be baby's very first wellness exam, so we'll get a close-up look at how it's developing. Hi, little thing. Hi. It's your newest patient. Hi, my name is Dr. Garrett Fraze. I'm one of the zoo medicine residents at the University of Florida's Veterinary Teaching Hospital, and I get the privilege of coming out to work with St. Augustine Alligator Farm as one of their zoo veterinarians. Let's do a sloth exam. We're here doing a well, very first wellness exam on this little baby sloth. So the first thing you'll notice is that I'm wearing a uh, mask and gloves. Uh, one thing we worry about on little baby sloths is respiratory infections and especially in today's global climate, we, we definitely don't want to be passing anything on and we want to keep this baby safe and sound and healthy. She seems bright, alert, um, uh, investigating the environment, got good muscle tone, I'm gonna look at the eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. It's very well hydrated, clear, no discharges, breathing well. And then lastly, I'm gonna do an oral exam if little baby will let me. And try and look at those little teethers. There we go. Oh, good job, little one, good job. St. Augustine Alligator Farm is able to care for these sloths because they have an intimate knowledge of, of sloth development and sloth care. As well, they're able to provide all of the, the niche food items that a sloth needs to develop. Additionally, they have a very close relationship with us, their veterinary team, which means that the moment that they suspect something's wrong, we can intervene. One of the things about sloths is that not only do they move slow, they kind of do everything a little bit slow as well. And so that even includes showing signs of illness. And so for the untrained person, it can be very, very challenging to be able to identify when a sloth isn't doing well. Sloths don't show it to people like our companion animals might. And so these keepers and curators at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm have an intimate knowledge of how to identify the moment something is going wrong, and they can call the veterinary team to intervene at the very start. One big problem that sloths are facing in the wild is the captive pet trade. And so they're, they're being kidnapped from the wild and, and unfortunately usually taken away from their mothers to become a part of, of the captive trade. So these guys actually need to stay with their moms for eight to 10 months to develop an appropriate GI flora. They actually consume all sorts of things, including their mother's milk, which contains antibacterials and really important proteins for their health and immune system. But they also start to, to forage for food on their own, even starting as soon as two months old, where they can kind of experience new things and, and have their mothers teach them what's appropriate food and what's not. For little baby sloths, the, the world is a little bit of a scary place and there are, are lots of ways that they can become sick. And so having their mother's, mother's milk that will have those immune proteins in it is really important. As well, their mother teaches them what is and is not appropriate foods. And, and one of the biggest things we see with, with captive sloths is that they're being fed or they only like an inappropriate diet and that really sets them up for, for disease and, and can be ultimately fatal for them. Their GI tract is so sensitive and so balanced that they, they need a, a very rich, diverse diet that's very specific. And unfortunately, it's not always the best tasting foods that are, that are the important ones for them and they need to learn from their moms um, how to forage appropriately. And finally, even though it sounds maybe not the most appealing, they actually do consume their mother's feces and, and that's actually really important to their health because that contains all of the bacteria that they need to digest their food. 
So monitoring baby and mom Grizzly back in the maternity ward, we have been privileged to see it reaching some of the developmental milestones. And it's hitting all of the same markers you would expect to see in the wild because it's continuing to learn from mom, which is so important. These are also a little bit harder to catch because sloths sleep up to 20 hours a day. So seeing that curiosity and that tasting of food, the learning to explore in between all of those nap times has been an extra special privilege. So uh, there are a couple of various tools that we'll use to do the sloth exam. One of the important ones is actually this little sloth plushie. This actually gives the baby sloth a sense of security. It's, it's not quite at the point that it can recognize the difference between this and a real sloth. And so this imitates a, a, its mom to a certain degree and gives it a sense of security when we're doing the exam. Um, you'll see that she'll just clutch this little sloth and, and um, be a lot more secure for the whole thing.